The octet rule is a rule that we use to predict the way in which atoms come together to form a molecule. Let's start with a refresher. A molecule is two or more atoms that are held together by covalent bonds. Covalent bonds are simply sharing of electrons between two atoms. So a molecule is just going to be defined as atoms that are held together because they're sharing electrons between the two of them. So I want to contrast that before I get into this with too much. I want to contrast the covalent bond and an um, molecule, I want to con contrast that with the ionic bond, which we've looked at before. So we've looked at, for example, sodium atoms coming together with chlorine atoms. When sodium atoms come together with chlorine atoms, the sodium atom wants to give up its valence electron and the chlorine atom wants that valence electron. So we get this partnership between sodium and chlorine where sodium is happy to give up its electron, which gives it a positive charge, and the chlorine is happy to take that extra electron, which gives it a negative charge. And the attraction between the positively charged cation and the negatively charged anion holds those two together, holds the sodium and the chlorine together, and we call this, the resulting thing, an ionic compound. And this is something that we've already talked about. So this is just kind of a, a refresher. With a molecule, when we have a molecule being formed, a molecule is formed as a result of two atoms coming together that don't have this same type of partnership. Um, either they both want to receive electrons or they both want to donate electrons. So we don't have a situation where one atom wants to donate and the other wants to receive. So if we brought two chlorines together, for example, both chlorine atom wants to receive an electron and neither one of them wants to donate an electron. So instead of one giving an electron to another, what they end up doing is just simply sharing. Each one shares its electron with another, and we end up with a situation like this, where we have this chlorine, I'm drawing the chlorine on the left, and then we have our chlorine on the right, and those, each one of them has those six electrons that you know they've kept to themselves, and then we have these two electrons in the middle that are being shared. I'm going to draw those two electrons a different color so we can find them. So these two electrons are being shared. And the sharing of the electrons between these two chlorine atoms causes these chlorine atoms to have to come closer together, you know, because they're sharing electrons. So they're pulled tighter together. And this is how the compound is formed. I want to label a couple of things. First of all, these electrons that are in between the two chlorine atoms, we refer to these electrons as the bonding electrons. And that name should make sense because they are the, the electrons that are creating that covalent bond that holds the chlorines together. All of the other electrons, so all of the electrons that are on the outside of the atom, and I'm not gonna draw my arrow to every single one of them, but all of these electrons out here, we refer to all of these electrons as non-bonding electrons because obviously they're not taking part in the bonding between the two chlorines. We also refer to them as lone pairs. So that's kind of like their nickname. They are lone pairs, lone pairs of electrons just hanging out by themselves. The Lewis structure, so not Lewis dot symbol, but Lewis structure, same guy. The Lewis structure is a representation of a molecule. Just like the Lewis dot symbol is a representation of an atom, the Lewis structure is a representation of a molecule. And the Lewis structure shows the atoms that are in the molecule. It shows the lone pairs. And it shows the bonds or bonding electrons. And those bonding electrons are represented as lines. So if we take this particular molecule, this Cl2 molecule, and we wanted to turn it into a Lewis structure, we would show the atoms, we would show the lone pairs, 
And we would show the bond as simply a line between the two atoms. That line, I'm gonna draw an arrow to that, this is our bonding electrons. Each line represents two electrons that are being shared between the two atoms. So we all know as chemists that this line right here represents the sharing of two electrons between these two atoms. So what does all of this have to do with the octet rule? The octet rule, like I said, is a rule that we use to help us predict the structure of a molecule. And the octet rule says that when an atom is in a molecule, so atoms in molecules, when an atom is in a molecule, it likes to have eight electrons total, either in bonds or lone pairs. So if we look at this Cl2 Lewis structure, or it might actually be easier to look at it up here, if we look at each one of the chlorine atoms, and we ask ourselves, um, how is the octet rule for this particular molecule? If we look at this chlorine atom, we can see that it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons around it. And our other chlorine atom also has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons. Because these electrons are being shared, they can be counted by both the atom on the left and the atom on the right in terms of satisfying the octet rule. So the octet rule is just a guideline that we use when we're drawing a Lewis um, structure or drawing the structure of a molecule. We draw it in such a way that all of the atoms in the molecule have eight electrons around them. Now there is one exception to the octet rule and that is hydrogen. I'm going to erase this right here, make this a little bit smaller. So one exception, hydrogen only likes to have two electrons, but all of the rest of the atoms like to have eight.